Yes, Mr. Costello. Commissioner, the next witness is Deborah Smith. Mrs. Smith, can I ask whether you would prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? I'll take an oath. Yes, where the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but. The and truth. nothing but the truth. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Smith. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Costello, Commissioner. Your name's Deborah Smith. Yes. And what's your occupation? Grazier. And your address is. Limbury Downs, which is near Hewenden in Queensland? Yes. Do you attend today an answer to a summons served on you by the Commission? Yes. I attend to that summons. Uh, the summons to Mrs Smith is Exhibit 4.109. And uh, Mrs Smith, have you prepared a statement at the request of the Commission? Yes. And do you have that statement with you? Yes. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes. I tend to that statement. Exhibit 4.110, statement of Mrs Smith. Mrs Smith, are you married? Yes. And what's your husband's name? Kenneth Noel Smith. And does he go by Ken? Ken, yes. And what does Ken do? He's a grazier. And how long has Ken been a grazier? All his life. Apart from a short stint of uh, timber cutting in the early how, days after school. How many years do you think he's been a grazier? 40 years. And how long have you been a grazier? For 30 odd years. And do you have any children? Yes. And are either of them on the farm? Yes. How many children do you have? Two. And which one's on the farm? The daughter. And does your son help at the farm at all? Yes. How often? As often as he can, as he works in the mines. All right. Now, you mentioned that you live on Limbury Downs. Do you call that property Limbry? Yes. Or is it Limbury? Limbry. All right. And uh, do you and your husband own that property? We mortgage it, yes. All right. When did you buy it? 1985. And you run cattle there? Yes. And whereabouts is that property? Uh, west southwest of Hewenden, about how, how approximately far? 43 kilometres. To Hewenden? Yes. And what's the closest major city to Hewenden? Charters Towers. All right. And how far is it from Hewenden to Charters Towers? Approximately 240 kilometres. And what about to Townsville? Um, 350 kilometres. Right. Now, how many acres is Limbri? 28,000, or, or just under 20, 29,000. Okay. And what sort of country is it? Open Downs, black soil country. What type of cattle farming is that country good for? Best suited for fattening. And what age do you start fattening? From weaners. And when do they... When do you take them off the mother and start weaning? Approximately six months old. And what type of cattle do you breed? Brahmin cross. Exclusively Brahmin cross? Yes. All right. Now, you've been on uh, Limbri since 1985, did you say? Yes. All right. And what's the, what are the weather conditions there normally like over the time you've been there? How many good seasons do you have to bad? Usually you will get eight good seasons in ten. And the other two? A little drier than, than average. How many cattle can you run on Limbri? Depending on their ages, but um, 
1,400 growing cattle. And who do you sell cattle to? To the feedlots, the backgrounders and the abattoirs and some through the sale yards. Do you sell any for live export? Yes. Where do you sell most of your cattle into? In, in the last few years, they have gone to export. Right. And you sell some into the abattoirs? Yes. And where's your nearest abattoir? Townsville. All right. And if you're sending cattle for live export, where do you send them? Charter Towers or Townsville. Depending on what? Depending on their delivery address. Right, I see. Now, at some point in time, you had a lease on another block? Yes. And do you remember what that block was called? The Stanford Reserve. And when do you think you took a lease on that block? Prior to 2005. And who did you lease it off? The Flinders Shire Council. And is that nearby to Limbrai? Yes. How close? 20 kilometres. And why did you take that lease? Our cattle were expanding, our, the few breeders that we had, and Limbrai is not mostly suited to breeders that we had um, to find somewhere else to put them on. All right, and when did the lease on that block end? Approximately... ..2003. Okay. And why did you end the lease on that block? We had purchased a block in the Northern Territory. When did you purchase a block in the Northern Territory? Uh, the end of 2002. And whereabouts was that property? Near Buralula. And uh, where's Buralura? It is in the uh, Western Gulf. Is that near the MacArthur River mining area? Yes. All right. And. Did that property have a name? Broadmere. Broadmere? Yes. And why did you buy that property? It was getting dry in the Hewenden area and it, there wasn't a sufficient feed around Queensland to put them, to put our cows on. So we went further afield and purchased a, a property in the Northern Territory. How big was that property? A quarter of a million acres. And did you or Ken move to the Northern Territory property, Broadmere? No, we ran it from our home base of Hewenden. Um, we had caretakers that looked after the water and fences. And what type of cattle did you have <coughs> on Broadmere? Brahman Cross. And were they breeders? They were our breeders, yes. Right. And so was the idea to have the breeders at Broadmere and the weaners brought down to Hewenden? Yes. Let's see. And um, how many cattle can you run on Limbri? 28,000 acres? Depending on, depending on the size of the stock, about 1,400 head of growing cattle. That's grown and growing? Yes. How long do you typically fatten them for before you sell them? Depending on what markets they were going to, um, at least 12 months. Okay. So if you're selling into the abattoirs, would it be 12 months? The um, biggest steers, yes. Um, cows may have had to have calved out and fattened before they went.
All right. And what about for live export? Is that the same? Yes. Okay. Now, you mentioned one reason you bought the property in the Northern Territory was it was getting dry in Queensland. Yes. And you bought that property and you got rid of your lease that was nearby Hewenden. Yes. And was part of the reason that having properties in different areas gave you a bit of drought protection? It does, yes. Okay. Do you remember what the weather conditions were like on Limbra in 2002, 2003? Dry. Right. And did you keep cattle on Limbra when it was dry? or Only the wieners that were taken off the cattle that were sent to Broadmere. I see. So how many wieners do you think you would have kept on Limbrae at that time? There was only about 100 head, I think. 100 head? Yeah. And I think you said earlier that you think Limbrae could hold about 1,400? 14, 1, yes. Okay. And how many did you have on Broadmere? We sent there 3,000 head. Okay. On trucks? On trucks, yes. And how long did you keep cattle at Broadmere for? For three years. Okay. Does that mean um, late 2005 or 2006? 2005, yes. Okay. And what did you do at the end of 2005? We purchased a property near Pentland and shifted our breeders from the Northern Territory property to the Pentland property. And what did you do with Broadmere? We sold it. Okay. And uh, the Pentland property, does that have a name? Oak Vale. Um, and so that's near Pentland. Where's Pentland compared to Limbra? Pentland is 110 kilometres west of Charters Towers. West of Charters Towers? Yes. So how far then between uh, Limbrae and Oakvale? Approximately 250 kilometres. And what type of land is uh, Oakvale? Oakvale is uh, ridgy mineral country. And what type of uh, cattle is that type of land good for? Best suited for breeding. Why is that? Uh, timbered country, um, a little safer rainfall. Not as lush. Not as not not um, not as lush. A bit hard. A lot. I suppose you could call it harder country than Limbroy, the Hewenden block. So Oakvale was in effect a replacement for Broadmere. Yes. But it was a lot closer. Yes. And was that one of the reasons you bought it? Yes. And is um, Oakvale in the same weather region as Limbrae, or do they have different climates? They have different climates. Okay. Um, does one typically get more rain than the other? Yes. Which one? Oakvale. And when's the wet season typically for Oakvale? January, February, March. And that's the same for Limbrae? Yes. This is Queensland summer is when you get the rain. Yes. Um, all right. When you bought Oakvale, do you recall who you banked with? Suncorp Metway. Okay. I just want to show you a document. It's uh, NAB 005-512-2. Zero double one five. While that document's coming up, can I ask you this? At some point you changed to NAB. When was that? 2008. That's after you bought Oakvale? Yes. This is a letter, which I should say for the transcript commissioner is um, tab 21 of 
the exhibits uh, to Mr McNaughton's statement. Uh, we could just go to the second page of that document. Actually, could we bring both pages up side by side? So this is a letter that you wrote in 2007. Yes. And while it's not immediately apparent, I think this is a letter that you wrote to the NAB. Is that right? Yes. And did you write this letter because you were with Suncorp Metway as it was then called, and you were thinking about moving to the NAB? Yes. And how did you come to think about going to NAB? It was one of the, um, one of the banks that had a branch in Huondon. And was it Im important or useful to you to be banking with a bank that had a branch nearby? Yes. That was helpful? Yes. All right. And did anyone from NAB approach you or did you approach them? Uh, I approached them. And how did you do it? Uh, via this letter. Via this letter. Yes. You just wrote to them? Yes. Okay. Um, and you give them a bit of detail about your operation? Yes. 300 head of breeders, three state forest leases. Are they, were they, was it three leases but all in the same area? Were they side by side or were they different properties? No, they weren't side by side. They were apart I see. Are from they, each other. Did you get rid of each of those three leases when you bought the Northern Territory? They were um, forestry leases. Oh, I see. You weren't running cattle So, on. no, they, they weren't sold, no. All right. Um, and it recites there that you purchased and relocated to Limbra in 1985? Yes. Um, Downs Fattening Country? Yes. And then at the end of 2003 you bought Broadmere in the Northern Territory? Yes. 400 females? Yes. Relocated your breeder herd 2,000 head. Then there was drought in Western Queensland. Couldn't find adjustment land or available properties for sale in Queensland and that's why you ended up with the property in the Northern Territory? Yes. You sold that at the end of 2005 for a profit and you bought Oakvale, which is the property near Pentland, and you put your breeders on there? Yes. And you say then that you're currently with Suncorp Metway? Yes. Uh, interest is payable at the end of April and October in a checking account with an overdraft limit of 600000 occurring occurring interest of approximately 5000 a month, which we find is killing us. Yes. So you'd had some difficulty, had you, with your Suncorp facilities? Yes, we did. And was that in part because of the way that they were structured and the amount of interest that was accruing on them? I can't remember exactly, but yes, it would have been. Okay. And then at this stage at least, it says on the second page, apart from the income coming from the cattle, we adjust our paddock at Limbri, which brings us 20000 a month. Yes. How long did you keep adjusting at Limbri? I'm um, <clears throat> not sure exactly at that time, but the the place was pretty near destock when we went to Broadmere. Right. Um, and it then says, you work at the sale yards at Hewenden during the day? Yes. While your daughter, who was then six, is at school, which brings in $400 a week. And your son, who was then 21, helps out when home every third weekend? Yes. So is it, is it about the same now? <coughs> does, he, does he help out about the same now? About yes. every third week. Yes. Okay. And then you say, we live on the smell of an oily rag, so to speak, and don't spend money on anything unnecessary. 
making do and repairing what we can ourselves. The last two financial years, we've had some personal expenses that are one-off items and don't happen normally. Two interest payments were late due to relocation and drought, in which Suncorp charged us excessively high penalties for an extra $80,000. Yes, that was correct. You're accepting help from the member for Kennedy. You've had a little help from government bodies. So you weren't entirely happy with Suncorp Metway? No. Um, and you weren't happy with them because you felt you'd been penalised? Yes. Um, and you felt you'd been penalised because you'd missed some payments. And why did you miss those payments? Um, due to seasonal activities. <coughs> All right. So when you went to the NAB, do you remember what facilities you took out? That document can come down now. A loan of $3.1 million and an overdraft of 250000 And in your mind, was the $3.1 million loan in effect the mortgage on Oakvale? And the remaining of the, the other mortgage from... Which would have contained a small part portion from the Limbroy originally before I see. the broad mayor. So it was yeah. the mortgage on, in effect, the two properties? Yes. And then you had an overdraft as well? Yes. And the overdraft was for your working capital? Yes. Okay. So that was about 2008 you came across to NAB? Yeah. Um, in June 2011, there was the live export ban. To Indonesia? Yes, there was. Did that have any impact on your business? Yes. How did it affect your business? It affected the monetary value of cattle, of all cattle at that time. Right. And did you have any cattle due to go for live export at that time? We didn't have any initially booked to export. So the live export ban didn't cancel a booking that you had? No. But it affected the price nonetheless? It did, yes. And how much did it affect the price that you would get for your cattle, do you think? Um, cattle prices plummeted by half, at least. How quickly? Overnight. And... Do you, when you sell cattle, do you usually sell for a dollar value per kilo? Yes. So what's a good price? A good price we still haven't achieved yet. Right. <laughs> well, what's a, what's a reasonable price? Over $2.50 a kilo. That's a reasonable price? <coughs> That's reasonable, yes. Okay. And um, do you have any idea or recollection of what, uh, the price per kilo was after the live export ban was announced? <coughs> For the cattle that we were selling, it was down to less than a dollar a kilo. <coughs> and how long did, price, did prices remain depressed? I consider it re remained depressed until 2015. Did it have any effect on the price of inputs into your business? Yes, everything we had to purchase to run our properties, the prices seemed to double. And do you think that was because of the live export ban or was that just at about the same time? I think time? that was, yeah, it's just at the same time. Right. It's the lower cattle prices made it a lot harder for us. Did it make it harder to get cattle into abattoirs? It did, yes. There was a there were floods on the market. And was that because cattle that were otherwise meant to be on a ship yes. suddenly were going to an abattoir? Yes. All right. And that affected I think you said your closest abattoir is Townsville? It did, yes. It affected the Townsville abattoir. All right. And you think about twenty fifteen prices recovered from that shock? They recovered reasonably well. <laughs> Well, they're never what you want them to be. No, they're not, no. Um, that was the middle of the year 2011 when the live export ban happened. Yes. 
come 2012, what was the weather like on Limbrae? Very dry. And was it better at Oakvale? Yes, it was. Did you have any unexpected weather at Oakvale in 2012? There was um, a flood. And, and it, was, it was also dry. It, <laughs> it's extremes. Extremes um, all it. All right. Uh, let's start with the flood first. When, do you recall when in 2012 there was a flood? Um, early, it would have been early in the year. All right. <clears throat> and um, is there any creek or river nearby to Oakvale? Yes, yes. Uh, where is it located compared to Oakvale? It runs, it runs through Oakvale. And it's a creek, is it? It's the Cape River. The Cape River? Yes. And is that what flooded? Yes. Okay. And did that affect your business? It did, yes. And um, how did it affect your business? Being able to get, because we're on a dirt road, being able to get livestock to market and it wiped out a lot of fences. Was that flood caused by heavy rain in your area or was it heavy rain downstream or both? Uh, heavy rain upstream. Oh, upstream. Yes, that would make much more sense. Uh, <laughs> Good. You'll turn me into a farmer yet. <laughs> um, so heavy rain upstream came down and apart from that, Oakvale was dry? In the end of the, the year, yes. Okay. Um, so Limbrae's dry 2012, um, Oakvale's both dry and flooding in 2012. Um, and then in January 2013, drought was declared declared at the region that Limbrae's in? The Flindershire, yes. Okay. And um, by the time that drought's declared in early 2013, conditions have been reasonably tough for a while at least because of the live export ban. 2012 it's dry on Limbrae. In any event, 2012 you have a flood at Oakvale. Yeah. So by the time the drought comes in January 2013, you've had some difficult times already? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes. And what did you do with your cattle on Limbrae when the drought struck? Reduce numbers to help. Did you move any from one property to the other? Yes. Um, and did you do that because Oakvale wasn't quite as dry as Limbrae? Yes. Okay. Yes. And did you eventually destock Limbrae? Yes, totally. When do you think you destocked it by? Um, totally destocked it by 2014. And at the time you destocked Oakvale, about how many cattle, sorry, destocked Limbrae, about how many cattle do you think you had on Oakvale? Um, about 2,000 head. Okay. So financially, by late 2012, early 2013 when the drought was declared, were you in a good financial position or was it a bit tight or was it very hard? How would you describe it? It was getting quite hard. Okay. And at some point did you get a rural financial counsellor to assist you? Yes. Do you know how that came about? Um, we were applying for some government funding. And as part of that process, a rural financial counsellor was assigned to you. Is that how it works? Yes, yes. I see. Um, and what was the name of that financial counsellor? John Swain. Then in April 2013, did you get a letter from the NAB because your accounts had fallen out of order? Yes. I'll take you to that letter. It's um, NAB 148-032-8970. This is Exhibit 6 to Ms Smith's statement. Is this the letter that you 
recall getting. Yes. Um, and it's from a senior manager at the bank. And it says, Dear Mr and Mrs Smith, I refer to the discussions I've held with John Swain, who has been assisting you regarding the facilities provided to you by NAB. So that's the financial counsellor that had been allocated to you? Yes. Your facilities have fallen into arrears and the bank holds concerns as to the viability of your business and is now considering commencing recovery action which could include the possible sale of your farming property. I've attached a copy of the Queensland Farm Finance Strategy. It's a voluntary scheme that NAB participates in. You will see that under the strategy the bank has agreed to offer formal mediation to customers when the bank is considering taking action under its mortgages or selling farm property. As the bank is now considering taking action under its mortgages to sell farming property, I've enclosed and he's put in a notice of their intention to take enforcement action against you, against the property, and the forms for you to respond under the bank. Yes. Respond to the bank. And then they suggest that you get some assistance from various people, including financial counsellors, legal aid, or private solicitor or accountant? Yes. All right. Do you remember getting this letter? Yes. And what did you think when you got it? Ah, oh, we were very frightened, yes. Did you, had you anticipated something like this was going to happen? No. Okay. But you did know that you were behind in your payments? Yes. And You were having some trouble with your cattle because of the weather? Yes. Is that right, yes. this time? Yes. Before you got this letter, had you thought about putting one or both of the properties up for sale? No. No. They wouldn't have been in a condition to sell. Because of the drought? Yes. So in that letter, the bank proposed farm debt mediation. Had you been to a farm debt mediation before? No. Did you know some people that had been? No. Okay. Did you know what it was? Not particularly, no. And did you speak to the Rural Financial Councillor as the bank had suggested? Yes. It also says you can get advice from legal aid. Did you end up getting some advice from legal aid? Yes. Um, and did you speak with legal aid directly or did your financial counsellor arrange that for you? He uh, arranged that for us, yes. Okay. And did you agree to go to farm debt mediation? Yes. And do you remember when that mediation was held? In September 2013. <coughs> and where was it held? Townsville. And who went to the mediation with you? My husband. And what about your financial counsellor? Did he go? Yes. And the legal aid solicitor? And that was Mr McMahon? Yes. And uh, you travelled from... Oakvale. Oakvale to Townsville? Yes. How far is that again? It's um, 200 and... Um, yeah, 250 odd kilometres. And did, do you remember if you went up the night before or did you go up the morning of the mediation? I think we went up there the morning of the mediation. Okay. And do you remember what time the mediation started? No, not particularly. Okay. It was in the morning? It would have been, yes, it was in the morning. Okay. And what do you remember about the mediation? It was very intimidating. Why was it intimidating? Uh, we were told that if we didn't sign what documents they had, that we would walk out of there with nothing but the clothes on our back. What were your expectations going into the mediation? That we would come to some sort of agreement um, to be able to settle part of our debts. And do you remember how long it lasted? It was all day. Okay. And were you in one room and the bank was in a separate room or were you all together in the one room? No, we were all together in the one room. Okay. And how long 
do you think you were there before there was a draft forbearance deed produced? Middayish. Okay. So who was the person principally negotiating that on your behalf? In Bruce Starkey. Bruce Starkey? Yes. He's from the bank? Yes. But who was who was negotiating for you? He was Oh sorry, for the bank. um John Swain. Right. Yeah. I see. And by the end of the day, had you come to an agreement with the bank? Yes. And that agreement was set out in the deed of forbearance and you've annexed that to your statement. I'll take you to it. It's uh, Exhibit 8, which is NAB 005 Is this the deed that you signed? This is, yes. And you signed it at the mediation, is that right? Yes. Okay. If we move to um, 1026 of that document. Thank you. Could that just be made a little bit larger? You'll see there there's a def definition of facilities. Facilities means the following facilities provided by NAB. And there's a number of different facilities there with the limit and the balance. Yes. So the ov overdraft by this stage is up to about 860000 The term loan uh, is $3.1 million still. Um, there's a small loan which looks like it relates to a Land Cruiser. Yes. And then you've got a MasterCard which is maxed out. Yes. Ken's got a Visa and he's got about, give or take, $600 available on that. Yes. And did you have other um, facilities with other banks at this time? Ah, uh, not that I could remember. The NAB was your bank? Yes, yes. Okay. So, um, aside from any money that you had on deposit, um, at the time of this mediation, in terms of available credit, you had a little under $600 on Ken's Visa card, is that right? Yes. Um, if we then move forward a few pages to You see there in um, heading four, change to facilities, if that could be enlarged. Have you got your hard copy there? Yep. Yes. Good. Yes. Um, can you see clause A uh, ends with NAB will release all claims to the land cruiser? Yes. So that was something you negotiated at yes. the mediation? Yes. Because you still owed some money on the Land Cruiser? Yes. And you needed the car? All right. Um, and then uh, in C, Roman 1, uh, all terms and conditions of the facilities continue to apply to the facilities, including the obligation to pay interest and costs as they fall due at the default rate 
applying to the facilities. However, if you comply with the deed, the bank would in Roman 1 rebate $50,000 to you on account of interest accrued before the date of this document. Do you remember that? Yes. And do you remember your Rural Financial Councillor negotiating that for you? Uh, I don't remember um, the Financial Councillor negotiating that. I think that was just Bruce Starkey's. That was just offered by the yes. bank? Yes. Okay. Um, in Roman 2 of C it says, applying rates of interest from the document date to the date of payment of the amount owing on the basis that no default had occurred under the facilities. Do you understand what that mean? What, what that meant? That there'd be no default interest okay. added to the account. And under the deed, NAB agreed to pay some operating costs for your business? Yes. And was the reason uh, that happened because you didn't have any facilities to pay for operating costs unless the bank was going to accommodate you to some extent? Yes. Okay. If we move across to 1031, Clause 5 imposes a number of obligations on you. Yes. Those obligations are primarily set out in B. Um, by the 1st of March, you agreed to commence marketing for sale either Limbri or Oakvale? Yes. And you were to exchange a contract for the sale of whichever one you chose by the 31st of May 2014? Yes and you were to have sold whichever one you chose by the 30th of June 2014? Yes. And this is this um, deed is September 2013, when you signed this document? Yes. Um, by the 30th of September, so that's 12 months from the date of this deed, you had to pay out all of your facilities with NAB? Yes. And by the 30th of April, you had to make a payment of 200000 net by selling cattle? Yes. You had to pay another 200000 net by the 30th of May? Yes. And then you had to pay 400000 net by the 30th of June 2014? Yes. Did you go to mediation thinking that you'd have to sell one of your properties? No, we didn't think we would, but it was mentioned to us that what we may have to okay. negotiate. And these payment timetables, 200,000 from cattle sales uh, by the end of April, 200,000 by the end of May and uh, 400,000 by the end of June. Yes. Um, how realistic did you think that was? Not very, considering the current conditions of the properties. Um, this was all sort of um, looking at if there was some wet season and cattle would fatten. I see. So do you remember when you went to the mediation in September 2013 what the condition of your cattle was like? Poor. And how, does, how do cattle sales work? If you sell into an abattoir, are you paid immediately upon delivery? No. How no. Are the, what are the payment terms for selling into an abattoir generally? Uh, most most um, undertake that um, it is 14 working days okay. from the time they get killed. So if you're selling into the abattoir, you've got to get the cattle <coughs> from, they're all at Oakvale by now, I think, or yes. just about all at Oakvale. You've yes. got to get them from Oakvale to Townsville. Yes. Um, you do that by putting them on a truck. Yes. And um, 
did you say 14 days after delivery or 14 days after slaughter? The uh, 14 days after slaughter. Okay. And how does slaughter happen pretty quickly? Usually it does, yes. Okay. It's within a few days. And what about if you put them on a ship for live export? Uh, you are paid when the ship sails. Um, same again, 14 days after, or depending on your contract, but most times 14 days after the ship sails. Okay. So you needed to pay 200, 200 and 400 all net, so you needed to pay a, a, a net 800,000 from yes. cattle sales? Yes. How many cattle do you need to sell to get a net 800? Um, you would, at that stage, um, good condition cattle, you were getting around about $10,000 for a deck load of cattle, which ideally weight-wise would be 20, 30, two head. A deck is how many you can fit on the back of a truck? Yes. Okay. And so how many is in a deck depends on how big the cattle are? Uh, growing, growing cattle, 20 a deck, the, um, 32, 34 um, export size cattle. Right. So how many deck of cattle do you think you need to sell to get 800,000 net, do you think? 80 decks. 80 decks. Now, at the mediation, did you ever suggest that this plan was unlikely? Yes. Did you think there was a chance it might work if you got some rain? It would have to have been a super year at the, if, if that, was, that plan was to come into effect. Now, did you have some time to consider the deed before you signed it? No. Okay. Did you have an idea at this time what Limbri was worth? Um, would only have been would it, would only have been worth as much as someone wanted to pay for a property with no grass on it. Does that mean not not as high value as you would have paid? Yes. For? Yeah. Okay. And what about Oakvale? It wasn't quite as dry at this point, I think. It wasn't quite as dry, but it was. Have there been many sales in either region recently when you went to the mediation that you can recall? At that time, no. Okay. So is it fair to say you didn't have a firm view about what either property was worth? Yes. But did you have an idea of what it was worth in a good season? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there is uh, in this deed, in an extra A, which is uh, 1038, some values ascribed to Limbry and Oakvale. It's that second column, assets, if that could be popped out perhaps. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You see there um, assets Limbrae, 28,213 acres at 120 an acre, 3.385 million. Oakvale, 40,524 acres, $86 an acre. Yes. Does that strike you as about right? If, if it was uh, a, a good season, yes, it would have. So you don't think that price is the price in the likely to be obtained for the properties if you sold them at, at the time, time you had the mediation? No. Okay. Now, you signed this towards the end of the day, did you, the deed? Yes. And did you stay in Townsville that night? No. Uh, straight back to Oakvale? Oakvale, yes. All right. And how did you feel after the mediation? Very tense. Very tense. And how was Ken? Worse. 
yeah, a lot more tense than I was. Um, you didn't feel some relief at having done a deal with the bank? No. When did you decide which property you'd sell? Um, while we were driving home, we sort of thought about things a little. Um, didn't really come to some sort of agreement until a few days later. And it says it in this letter you wrote to NAB um, earlier on, but in a passage I didn't read. At that time, at least, when you went to NAB, you were living on Limbry and Ken was at Oakvale. Yes. Is that right? And yes. then on weekends you'd go up to Oakvale. Yes. And was that the same in 2013 when you'd signed yes. the deed? Yes. You were, you were managing and running Limbry, he was managing and running Oakvale? Yes. Okay. Um, so a couple of days later you, do, you agreed which one you'd sell. Yeah. And what did you decide? That we would um, market Limbry. Okay. And did you list that property for sale? Yes, we did. And who did you do that with? With Andrew Jensen Real Estate in Charters Towers. Did you have a discussion with Mr Jensen or one of his staff when you listed it for sale? Yes. And do you remember who it was with? With Mr Jensen. And what were his views at the time? Um, that it would be highly unlikely to sell at this time because of the dry conditions. Okay, and why did you decide Limbry and not Oakvale? Um, because we we breed cattle um, and Limbry was more suited to fattening. Um, we saw that the deed, that document can come down now, thank you. We saw that the deed uh, required you to make that first $200,000 payment by the end of April. Yes. 2014. Did Ken have an accident in April 2014? Yes. What happened to him? Uh, he was hit by a cow from behind and um, ended up in hospital for two weeks with a, a long recovery period after that. What injuries did he sustain? Uh, broken ribs and a punctured lung. And how did that accident happen? Um, loading cattle for sale. All right. At? Oakvale. And were you there when it happened? Yes. Right. So you're both loading cattle, what, into a truck? Yes. To sell it. And do you remember when in April that was? Um, uh, I think it was early April. Okay. And Ken went to hospital. Where's your nearest hospital? Charters Towers. Okay. Um, you probably don't get an ambulance to come to... Oakvale from Charters Towers? Uh, no, no. How did he get there? Um, my son took him to hospital. Uh, we didn't think the, the injuries were as serious as they were. Now, that was April 2014. Uh, what was the rest of 2014 like on Limbry? Uh, got drier. It was. And what about at Oakvale? Uh, same again, drier. By the end of June 2014, you were supposed to have paid NAB $800,000. Do you know how much you managed to pay them? Not very much at all. Not that much anyway. Could you guess? <laughs> um, or did you just have no idea? I think there was like twenty or $30,000. Okay. You hadn't sold Limbry by that point, by June 2014? No. Is that because you just hadn't found a buyer? Yeah, it was quite, quite, quite dry then. And did Oakvale eventually go into drought? Yes. And when did that happen? Uh, 2015. Okay. And was 2014 generally dry for Oakvale? Yes. Okay. So by the end of 2014, you had not repaid the 800000 that you were supposed to pay under the deed of forbearance. And though you had listed Limbry for sale, you hadn't managed to get a contract for anyone to buy it, let alone 
complete the contract. Is that right? That's correct. So you're in pretty serious default of your obligations yes. under the deed by uh, mid-2014 and uh, the end of 2014? Yes. In April 2015, you sought an extension from the NAB of the terms of the deed of forbearance. Do you yes. recall that? Yes. Did you do that or did your financial counsellor do that? Uh, the financial counsellor did that. Okay. Um, can I show you a document? It's NAB 005-451-2196. Now, you mentioned earlier that your financial counsellor was John Swain, but this yes. is a letter from Rachel Bock. Did you... Get, get a different financial counsellor at some point? Ah, uh, yes. Um, John Swain retired and Rachel was, her, was his uh, replacement. And did you speak with Rachel before she sent this letter? Ah, uh, yes. All right. And um, she sent this letter having had a discussion with you? Yes. And she says... Um, I've been instructed by Kenneth and Deborah Smith to request a variation of the forbearance deed under Section 2. The clients request you extend the timing for sale of the property to the 30th of April 2015, based on the following. Limbry and Oakvale could not be sold to its best advantage if sold in the present drought conditions. Due to poor market conditions, long-reach cattle sales, closest market for sale of stock, have only completed three sales to date in 2014. Can you explain what that means? Uh, long-reach uh, usually sells weekly. And because of the dry conditions that were getting worse all over Queensland, that the sales had been reduced. They just couldn't get the cattle in to... So did you say they usually, sale. usually sell weekly in Longreach? And this is saying at the 25th of July they'd had three sales? Yes. I see. Um, many sales were scheduled and cancelled due to lack of numbers, and this has impacted on Ken and Deborah's sale schedule. Deborah and Ken's first sale this calendar year was at Roma Cattle Sales. How far is Roma from Oakvale? Uh, it's over 500 kilometres. On the 1st of July 2014, 177 head of steers were sold at an average price of $1.15 and a half a kilo. Stock in this condition would usually achieve a sale price of $1.70 a kilo. This is down 32%. Plus increased freighting costs were incurred to freight stock the extra distance. Do those figures look right? Yeah. Okay. And then it says development finance partners are sourcing refinancing opportunities and expect to have the fi this finalised in the near future. That's the first time we've heard of development finance partners. Yes. Uh, were they people that you had arranged to try and find you new, somebody you could refinance the NAB with? Okay. And do you recall if you received a response to this letter from the NAB? Uh, yes, we did. Okay. You've exhibited that letter to your statement as Exhibit 12. It's NAB see that this is from Mr Starkey who you've mentioned a few times to Rachel Bock, your financial counsellor, and he says, thank you for the attached update. Mr and Mrs Smith are clearly in default of the agreement reached at mediation last year and the bank is not willing to vary the agreement in the manner you have requested. The bank reserves its rights under the deed dated 13 September 2013. Could you please advise when Mr and Mrs Smith expect to have an answer in respect to their application for refinance? Did Miss Bock show you this email or tell uh, yes. you about it? Yes. And uh, did you expect that response or did you think you'd get your extension or was it just a hope? We were hoping but we didn't expect it. Okay. Um, you sent 
a further email to NAB in October 2014, which is Exhibit 13 to your statement. I'll show you that letter. It's NAB 005-451-2309. Yes. You've got the hard copy there? Yes. This is you giving a bit of an update to Bruce Starkey at NAB. Why did you send this? Um, to update him on the conditions um, that we were, yeah, we were trying to offload cattle and okay. try and get some money to them. So you tell him in the first paragraph that you've sent some cattle off to the meatworks um, and the proceeds will be paid 14 days from the date of kill? Yes. And then you say, uh, <laughs> Nils, NLIS readings from these cattle are on the kill sheets. What's an NLIS reading? Uh, it's a uh, National Livestock Identification <laughs> System. All right. And then you say, as for Neil's readings on cattle on the properties, is impossible to supply as cattle are not required to be tagged by law until the stock travel. These tags get ripped out on the fences and trees and anything else the cattle rub on. They cost $4 each, so we don't tag our cattle. They are sold or transported until they are sold or transported to the other property. Now, this was because you'd been asked by NAB for some information from the National Livestock Index. Yes. And this is you responding to that. Can you just explain that system and how it works? Um, you have to, by law now, tag your cattle for um, transport or when they're shifted off the property so that um, any diseases and um, chemicals that may be in their systems that are, are not allowed to be in their systems can be identified from what property they came from. Okay. And you've just buy the tags? Yes. And you buy the exact number of tags for the exact number of cattle that you have, or...? You no, you've always got extras on hand. OK. And you need a reader? If you want to read them, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, there was some further correspondence that you've annexed. I won't take you to it in um, October 2014 in November 2014 where you were trying to come to an arrangement with NAB if you could. Some of that correspondence is written by Neil Fleming on your behalf. Who is Mr Fleming? Um, he was a, a, an advisor that we had sought, sought some help from. What? Was he an accountant or an agricultural consultant or...? Um, I can't remember exactly his qualification. I think he was an accountant. OK. But he was negotiating on with the bank on your behalf? Yes. At least part of 2014? Yes. OK. But you didn't come to any arrangement? No. OK. So then by um, early 2015, had you had any rain on Limbri? No. And what about Oakvale? It was getting worse. All right. Can I um, show you a document, NAB 148 006 1475? Yes. Is this Limbri? Yes, that is. Can you recall when this photograph was taken? They were taken uh, late 2015. All right. And who took them? Uh, a fellow from, I think, Ray White Rural in Townsville. And he'd been sent by the bank? Yes. And what we're looking at here is that land that you'd normally keep cattle on? Yes. Okay. And 
let me show you another photograph. It's NAB 148006. Uh, first document is 1467, but I want to go to 1473. Is this also Limbrai? Yes. And this was taken at the same time? Yes. And there's no cattle in either picture, and that's because you've destocked Limbrai and they're all at Oakvale? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, can we now go to NAB 148006 1474? This is Oakvale? That is, yes. And was this taken at the same time? Yes. Okay. Um, and was it taken by the same person? I, I think so, yes. Okay. And now can we go to NAB 148 006 1467 at 1470? Where is this? Oakvale. And this was taken at the same time by the same person? Yes. All right. Could we go to... Uh, could we go to 1472? These are your cattle? Yes, they are. Uh, on Oakvale? Yes. At the same time? Yes. This photograph taken by the same man? I presume so, yes. Okay. And um, if we could go to 1469, please. Could you describe the condition of these cattle? Very poor. And they're eating some hay there. At, by this stage, you're trucking in hay, are you? Yes. Um, yes. Because there's nothing, or at least not sufficient, left at Oakvale for the cattle that to eat? That is correct. Okay. Did you lose any cattle to the conditions? Yes. And how do you know that? Um... There was a fella uh, lost in the mountains and there was a search conducted for him. And the uh, um, pilots and the police uh, had told us that there was hundreds of dead cattle in the gullies in the, in the high country. It was um, Oakvale's not flat land? No, it's not. It's partly no, flat it land, but it's rough. also... A bit mountainous? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is 2015, and after this, uh, the after the bank sent the gentleman from Ray White in to take the photos, the bank then made some funds available for some extra feed for the cattle? Yes. Is that right? Okay. Um, so that was 2015. Then what happened in 2016 at Limbrai? Did you get any rain? No. And what about Oakvale? Very little. And what happened with NAB? Um, we haven't hadn't heard from them. They they um, had given us some money, but yeah, communication wasn't very strong. I, th I think that picture can come down now, please. Um, so. Do you recall where the default interest was being charged at this point? Yes. 
Do you recall when they started charging default interest on your facilities? Um, I was, yeah, straight away after the, I'm pretty much sure it was straight after the um, mediation. So um, if that's right, default interest had been running for a few years by this point? Yes. Um, and Limbri's still in drought and Oakvale's still in drought and you can't get a sale away while the land's in drought. That's correct, yes. And your cattle are in a poor condition? Yes. So that's 2016. And then what about 2017? Any rain at Limbri? No. What about Oakvale? Very little. Um, and what about contact with NAB? Any um, attempt by you to try and rearrange the facilities or any attempt by them? No, we still the properties were not in a position to um, sell. Would you accept that sometimes you've been a little bit hard for the bank to get in contact with? Um, only to the fact that we were probably working from daylight till dark and long after and long before. All right. Now, um, most recently, and I think January of this year, NAB wrote to you again. Yes. Um, I'll show you that letter. It's NAB 148 025 4676. This is exhibit 15 to your statement. Recall this letter from earlier this year? Yes, I do. And uh, that letter could just be made a little bit larger. It says it's been some time since we attended mediation in September 2013. We now we are now intending to invite you in early 2018 to again use the mediation process to try and agree a way to repay your debt to NAB. There's then some discussion about cash flow presented at the 2013 mediation and the agreement that was reached there, your obligations under the agreement. And they say in that third paragraph, we acknowledge the effort you made to continue to make some payments to us through to June 2015 and that during this period your properties will have been impacted by drought. We also understand that you have sought assistance from a number of parties to try and find a solution to your financial problems. Now, it's true that you had sought assistance from a number of parties. You'd had two financial counsellors. Yes. Um, at least for the farm debt mediation, but not beyond, you had legal aid. Yes. And then you had Mr Fleming, who mention was made of. Yes. And... Um, You'd use some other people as well to try and either do a deal with NAB or get a refinance or both? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, now, what did you think when you got this letter? Um, we, we, we thought... Um, so, yeah, the inevitable has happened and we don't know what's going to happen now. Have you responded to this letter? N no, we have not. And why haven't you? Um, because uh, not too long ago, uh, Debt Mediation Act changed and we did not think that we were eligible because we have been to mediation before. Right. Uh, you thought that it wasn't necessary for the bank to 
have to have another mediation to enforce its securities because of your uh, September 2013 mediation. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, even if that's true, though, um, that wouldn't stop you being able to talk to the bank if you wanted to talk to the bank? Um, no, I guess not, no. Um, is it... Is any part of your reluctance that you found the process a little disconcerting the first time around? It was, yes. Yes. Are you thinking about responding to this letter? Yes. And have you spoken to Ken about it? Uh, we have spoken, yes. Okay. And does he have a view about whether you should go to mediation or not? Um. Yeah, yes, he's in, he he does not want to yeah. because of the what we've found out about the act, the new act that had come in okay. regarding debt mediation. All right. Um, when was the last time you had decent rain on Limbra? The last time um, was uh, 2010, uh, 2010, 2011. Wet season. And uh, Oakvale was a bit later than that? Yes. When was when did you get rain on Oakvale? Decent rain? Um, 2012, 2013 was the last reasonable year that I can remember. Can you recall anybody from the bank at any point speaking to you about hardship arrangements? No. Do you recall speaking with somebody from the bank called Dale McDowell? No. What about Grant Bloomfield? No. Okay. What's the condition of Limbri like now? It has recovered a little because we have had half an average wet season. Um, but the grass is very thin at this stage. After you've had drought for a few years, do you need um, do you need a better than average wet season to get back, or will a, an average wet season be enough to get the land? You, you need as many years of average seasons, at least, um, as as that you ha as you have had drought. So if we've had five years of drought, we need five average seasons to be fully recovered. How has Ken found the last five years? Very difficult. Um, we've had to work very hard to keep our cattle alive or keep some of our cattle alive so that we have something at the end of the drought to continue on with. Um, and how have you found the last five years? Very stressful. Um, you acknowledge that you've got significant debt to the bank? Yes. Yes. So what do you want to do? We would, we would like to um, still sell one of the properties to clear the debt and make way for some refinancing if we need be. You want to stay on the land? Yes. You want to keep Oakvale if you can? Yes. All right. Um, would you let the bank sell Limbury if they could find somebody to buy it? Um, if they could find someone to buy it at um, a decent, decent price. And you said earlier that you'd been a grazier since 1985. Have you done anything else? Uh, no, I, um, I I don't have any formal qualifications apart from a truck licence. All right. And have either of your children expressed any view on wanting to work on the farm at some point? Yes, they both love the, love the land and, and their stock. Is there a chance your son would come back from the mines at some point? Yes. All right. I have no further questions, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Mr. Thomas. Uh, no questions, Commissioner.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. You may step down. Thank, Thank you. you.